Good morning. Welcome once again. And blocked out. Okay, whatever. Uh, welcome once again to uh, Presence of Light with Charlie Riverman Bergeron. It's always a joy to be with you on Friday mornings. I actually got in on 10 a.m. in spite of some uh, confusion uh, between me and the technology, which is always uh, a part of my my experience. It, it's just never going to stop um, until I stop, I guess. And uh, so I'm glad to be here with you uh, in this month of December as it's a very powerful month. And today's topic was powerful for me and it came out of nowhere, really. Uh, as I sat and looked out the window. And when I say nowhere, I, you know, it wasn't, I was just saying, well, what am I going to talk about today? And across the street was this beautiful field. It's an empty field and uh, it was covered with frost. And the sun rises up on that side. And I mean, it was just amazing to sit there. This was probably the first heavy frost that we've had. We've been pretty mild here in, uh, I'm in Maine, but I'm in the southwest coast of Maine. So we get a lot of water, um, air off the water rather than, um, and it, the temperatures haven't dropped that much. So it was just amazingly beautiful. And that's what I was thinking, well, what am I going to talk about today? And so, as always, my guides are just saying, look at the crystalline structure of all of those, uh, all of that frost. I said, those are crystalline. And so I just wrote down the words, a crystalline brilliance. I'm not thinking, where is this going to lead me? Because I don't really plan these talks i ask my guides to say okay this is what what do you want to bring to the world today what you know this is my purpose is to be the uh, carrier of your messages and it surprised me uh, as i started to just think about what does crystalline structure and what about nature and what about light and how we reflect that on us and we absorb that and we exchange that with each other and that we can look at things some from a scientific point of view we can look at it from a spiritual point of view and we can also just um, dive into uh, our own imagination of and where is that going to take us and so um here we are, it's just a matter of putting things together in a new way of looking at things, really. Because what we're doing, and we're going to be doing in the next year in particular, is we're going to be uh, stepping into newness that is going to be not really strange, but it will be odd. I, I will use the word odd because we're going to go into ourselves deeper. And that's what I'm seeing for me. Uh, and many of you may be in this place that I'm at where we are, you know, sort of um, in a standstill that we're sort of wanting to celebrate what we've missed over the past couple of years due to COVID. And yet there's a part of that that you say, well, maybe it's time to let that go. Maybe it's time to shift into something new. And and we don't know what that new is. So we're all in sort of that uh, space between, uh, be, my guys say space between dimensions. <laughs> uh, I love you. I love you all. Uh, and so this is this is where we are. We're we're doing this dimensional shift, if you will. Uh, at least that's what they're calling it. And we may not feel it uh, emotionally. We may feel it physically. If we don't feel it physically, we may feel it emotionally. So each one of us are unique, and each one of us 
are here at this moment in time for a specific reason. And that may sound strange, but somewhere in the history of our beingness, I will just put it in those terms, the history of our beingness, uh, we chose to be here. We chose to be here at this time, and we are here. And we are continually working together, even though the outer surface of what's happening looks like it's all exploding and chaos and confusion. Really, in the inner core, like the inner core of Mother Earth, the balance is still there or we wouldn't be here on its surface. So just like us, within us, there's a changing and shifting, a realignment, if you will, for us to um, take on this new, I'm gonna use the word responsibility. So what does that mean? So the topic for today was a crystalline brilliance. And as I looked across the field there, uh, you know, there was just just this delicate it was just so delicate you you didn't want to walk across it you just wanted to sit there and look at it and see the reflection of the light and you could feel the light and it made me think of the crystalline structure within my body and how that needs light as well and how when we have light in our structure when we're feeling the energy of light, we feel clear, we feel happy, we feel enthusiastic. And when we're feeling darkness in ourselves, and I'm just using this not in any particular uh, frame, just light and dark. When we feel dark in ourselves, we feel heavy. We feel uh, non-energetic. We uh, we depression occurs. So here we are with this sort of brilliance of crystallinity, and yet there's an electromagnet magnetism in that crystalline structure as well. So you know I have lots of crystal skulls and crystals. So if I just take this crystal crystal here, and you can see the energy in that crystal. And that's, you know, this is the light. This is the light. This is the power of crystal to absorb light. And I wasn't planning on this, but here it goes. So this crystal is absorbing the light. And as it absorbs the light, it sends it back to us. And it enhances the light. And everything that we do, it's like the crystal, the snow on the ground and the crystals on the trees when they freeze. When that light shines it there and we see it, yes, we may feel cold because of the temperature, but there's such a brilliance, such a, br a magnitude of light that in some way changes how we think changes how we look at life. So when we are brilliant inside and it's reflected from the outside into us, we feel whole, we feel as part of the, the con connector field really is nature. We're not separated anymore. This took me back to what we've been going through all of this, these, these viruses and illnesses that everybody is getting and how it separated us and how we've got this separation going on in the world. And the leaders of, of countries are totally off the charts. They're, they're doing things that are just totally irrational, at least to me. And the reality of that is what's causing that. And what it is for me is a disturbance. It's a great disturbance in the energetic fields of these people. Just as there's a, when we sense an energetic disturbance in us, we become sick or uh, we're tired or whatever. So I wasn't intending to look at all of this, but what those crystalline little structures on the leaves of those that feel 
just grasped me and said, here is what light does. Can you come and join us in the light? And in that moment, I'm asked, what do you have to say? Now I know you all might think I'm a little crazy or a little strange, but uh, I feel I can talk to anything and I will get an answer. Uh, it may not be verbal, <laughs> but there is a message in every living thing on this planet. Everything is alive, including the rocks. Yeah. So I send that message to you because this is the change that we're going through is we're beginning to realize that we've created a, uh, how do I say this, a mechanical world, an electronic world, a computer world, okay? But that's not a real world. Uh, when the electricity goes out, it's, it's not, okay? It relies on electricity. I mean, I mean, we can rely it on solar power, but I mean, basically, if you don't have that, um, we don't communicate, but we still communicate person to person. And what I see in the message I received is that we've crossed the line where the technology has outstripped the humanity. And this may sound bizarre, but this I'm just sharing what comes through me. On that, while it's an amazing, useful tool, what's happened is it's being programmed for us to rely on too much. And we're not getting enough light. Okay, very simple, get out in the sun. Okay, so this is a reminder to us, okay, that even in the brilliant morning sun, things can be frozen in place. However, you can see that as a transition, as the sun comes up, the ice melts and it flows again. It changes shape, it changes form, changes structure, but yet it isn't different. It's all the same molecules. It's all water. We are all water. And we, like nature, work with the sun. We work through the sun and through the earth. We are a connector field between the two. As we tap into that and realize that our behavior here and what we do is very critical to the balance. And it's not something we don't know, we, we do know. But the question is, when are we really going to take that seriously? When are we really going to look at that and see the message that if we don't do something about it, trying to go to another planet and live is, is absurd. It's a wonderful dream. It's a wonderful thought. But we need to take care of ourselves right here, right now. And what we need is more light. And what we need is more real light. What's called full spectrum light. I didn't know these words until this morning. Okay. But full spectrum light is what we get from the sun. Okay. And I don't know what it's all about scientifically. But I do know that health-wise... If we don't get that, parts of our body fail miserably. Again, we've just come through this two, three years of somewhat isolation, of staying in, of wearing masks, not breathing air, not living in the atmosphere. Could that be just a trial? period to see, will they be able to live in outer space? I don't know. Will we be able to survive 
if we have no contact with each other, if we have no contact with nature. This may say sound preposterous to everyone, but the reality is, is that each and every one of us are looking for something brighter. We're looking for a brilliance, which can mean very light, full of light, or it can be wisdom. Brilliance has those two meanings or two flavors, I'll call them. And they go together. Without that light, you know, we always think about the aha moment, the light bulb goes off. It's a light, it's brilliance, and it's we and we bring in information. All the information that is going to be beneficial for everyone needs to be broadcast. Now, we look at uh, public media and we realize that it's regulated. It's regulated by dollars. Whatever somebody is going to pay to put on there is what's going to be on there. Whatever is going to uh, be an advantage to somebody else's wealth, that's what you're going to get. Truth has been twisted. It has been, they're not lies, but man manipulated into what people think rather than what is. So even that the light of the news that would, should be in, involving us and telling us what's going on, if you look at it, most of it is negative. If you look at negativity as darkness and light as positive, what are you receiving? You're receiving a dose of darkness. Now, if you look at what we're going through, when we are locked into our homes and we can't go out, we're being put in darkness and held from going into the light. So now we have another negative aspect in our lives. When we come together in our private homes, what we're dealing with is people who have never, uh, who are not used to being, to, even though they're married, they've got families, together that long of a time, but also with out their natural patterns in place. So you, everybody's life pattern has been distorted. What does that create in all of us? Darkness. What does darkness represent in our emotional system? Depression. What do we get from depression? Illness. So you can see a, a, a flow of what's going on. And I'm not blaming anybody. It, it, it may be just a, a perfectly uh, honest, natural process that humanity has to go through. So what is the solution? Because I've blah, blah, along it. So the, what is the message of the crystalline brilliance is light. So we start with the sun. How many, how much time do you spend in the sun? And I don't mean to go get a tan but out in nature where everything else is relying on the light of the sun to nourish it. Why aren't we getting that nourishment? The key is we need to get out in the light more, to spend more time in nature because it's a crystalline brilliance, every single part of it has a crystalline structure at some level, okay? And the light is needed for us to co-create and be balanced with our own physical neural network. 
Those are my words. Those are the words that came through me. I just try to put them in some form of human understanding. But our neural network, even though it's in this body, needs that light. Just like Mother Earth. Even though Mother Earth's neural network is in the ground, she needs that light. The trees need the light. The water needs the light. Everything needs that light energy. If we look in our homes, what do we live with in our homes? An artificial light at night. Now, in the old days, we had fire. We, fire was the light. We were candles or torches or whatever. So fire is an element. Fire is elemental. We are elemental. So there's a connection there. But this imitation light that we live in, these screens that we sit in front of, are not beneficial to our health. I can't prove that. I'm sure there's somebody who can, and I'm sure they've been told not to say it because they want to sell this. They want to create a world of communication that can be uh, easily manipulated and easily um, transferred and ruled by others. So they realize that there's a lot of things that we're doing right now that we consider, oh, look at this, this is amazing. I can do this with this and that. But we're not being told the truth about the negative side of that, which is darkening our ability of brilliance. Now, we use the word brilliance both for light and for intelligence. Is there a connection? Why wouldn't there be? Why wouldn't there be? If we are able to do more things when we have light rather than darkness, why would it not be the same within our brain? What is our brain? It's shaped like the earth in a lot of ways. So here we are. Here we are in a world that is changing very rapidly because of our ability to receive information at a quicker, faster, more efficient level. Things that took 20 years to learn, they're now learning in eight months. Okay. So technology has been a gift. Uh, so I'm not poo-pooing anything. I'm just saying it's a gift. But if we don't see where the imbalance is, then we're all cruising on a path where uh, we're going to have future problems. Each one of us need to take responsibility for our individual selves. Doesn't mean we separate, but we come to a collective consciousness that says, if I keep doing this, I'm not only hurting what's happening right now, but the future generations. So we have to think, start thinking right now, uh, not less about ourselves, but we need to think about the future generations of humanity. And that's what that crystalline brilliance was speaking to me, was will there be a future generation to witness this? Sounds very doom and gloom. It isn't, but the message was there to say, let's focus on what we can do right here, right now, with the brilliance that we have to make a better world for those who will be the future generations.
and we need to think about them first. And I know in your hearts, you understand what I'm saying. You may not agree with how I say it, but this is what we're looking forward to. Most of us came from a generation that had just come out of a war, a world war, and emotionally damaged parents. It wasn't their fault. They, they were starving. They were working nights and days to create war equipment. What are we doing right now in, in, in the world? It's the same thing. It's just repeating itself. It's a repeat pattern. Does it need to be? Do we need World War One, two, three, four, five? Six? Is this like a book? Are we writing a book? No, we not need another chapter. And rather than writing a new book and a new path and a new understanding, we're going to write, rewrite the same stuff we've done for thousands of years, annihilating one another and creating misery and pain and suffering. It's our choice. Back to the light. The light is uh, in my show notes here. It's uh, once brilliance or our brilliance is layered and flexible as well as able to shift energy within ourselves and each other rapidly just think about a phone call and i'm gonna you know just use that as an example and you call somebody uh, and you start talking and, and everything's very friendly and and uh, you know you happen to say something or do something and then they're they're feeling bad about it or attacked or whatever it triggers something in them and then the middle that the conversation completely goes dark and there's anger and frustration light dark that's how easy it clashes we even do it in our words and the light gets diminished the light that you had in talking to this person now you have to defend it and what is the first thing we do we put up a shield when we put up our shield the heart energy is not moving anymore we blocked it so you can see that all of these things that happen in our physical life as simple as a phone call doesn't have you know doesn't have to be in person shifts our energy and it's easy to do now because there's not we are not holding enough light within us if we increase our ability to hold uphold and store and light energy within us in all of its forms we become less apt to be triggered because now we're receiving that energy in parts of our body and our brain where it's connected and working just like the frost it's connected and working its purpose is its purpose it's shape-shifting with the temperature. And in many ways, it's communicating with everything around it. And it's there that we can look at the world and see how the world survived perhaps before humans with just animals and we can look and see how chaotic it may have been and in all of the years of humanity we adapted life from the animals and a part of us still has that memory it's there 
And if anything right now, we're heading back to our animistic self rather than evolving into our future human self. So light is needed right now for us to co-create and be balanced within our own physical network. That light comes from the sun. And if you find yourself energetically feeling distressed, where's one quick place to go? Right there. Get some sun. Now, I don't mean to go get it, burn your skin and, and all of that. But if you look at the world we live in today, why can't we do that? Partly because of all of the chemicals in our body is no longer able to resist the damage of the skin. We've created thousands of things to protect us from the skin, from the, from the sun. Wait a minute. <laughs> My ancestors <laughs> didn't have it. They, they wore clothes or they paid attention to what they were doing. They didn't need all of that stuff. It, the sun didn't change. It may be a little stronger. Uh, the earth didn't change that. So what is changing? We have created things in our world that have changed us. And not in a good way. But they've changed us to make some people very wealthy. Through greed. I'm not all negative today. But this is what we have to remember is that what each of us are going through right now is a process of releasing what is no longer beneficial in our future. I'm watching the time because I can go on forever, I know. So how do we do that? How do we do that in nature and with nature? There's that light right there. Choose the light, not the darkness. I mean, this is not a, an unsimple process. It's just a reshifting of our way of thinking and way of living to say, why am I always trying to fix something that's broken rather than living a life which doesn't break? It doesn't break now. What can I do to increase my ability of not breaking down? So back to light. It's needed for us to co-create. It's needed for us to be balanced within our own physical neural network. Let's see. How does this, wait a minute. How does light affect my inner self? Because we are light. You'll always hear me say, we're peace, we're light, and we're love. Physically, emotionally, energetically. That's creation. We're the ones who create the violence and all of the rest. Violence exists in nature, but it's not because its intention is violent. Humans are the ones who have intentional violence going on. And look at the world, look at what we've created. It's time now to say, okay, if we've created this, we can uncreate it. How do we do that? The sun is the guide. The sun shows up every day. The sun offers its best 
of it can be to all of us. It doesn't change its mind. It works with everyone and everything, not only on planet Earth, but every planet that's in its orbit. And we have to remember that the sun is a star. It's not just what we call it, the sun, but it's a star. To other stars, when they look out, this, is a sun. this isn't just a sun, it's another star. If you're feeling energetically weakened, get out in the light. I'm not saying go have a sun bath for 10 hours, but get yourself outdoors. Go for a walk. See the world around you. I know many of you live in cities, so nature is at a minimal thing, but find places wherever you live where the trees live in community, where the bushes and the trees and the water are together. Even if it's a park, I grew up in a city and my playgrounds, the best playgrounds I had were in the parks of the city. Those are my fondest memories. I was a street kid. I learned how to jump roofs. I learned how to do things that people should not even know how to do. But when I got into those parks, I was there with the squirrels and the animals and and it, it was a it was just a different energy field. So get out of nature more, get some more sun. If you're okay, allergic to sun, then you have to be cautious and careful. But get out there because it's the light that we need right now. And it's not the light just that we receive, but we need to energize the light within us so that we shine on each other. Um, recharging, recharging in light. What do we do at night? At night, it's a different story. We have all this artificial lighting. I've got all of these lights. They are not what's called full spectrum lighting. And a lot of the new light bulbs are, um, I forget what they're called, but they're even less healthy for us. Just like the 5G is less healthy for us but everybody wants it everybody's got to have it because it reduces this or it does that but it's affecting us all and these are the things we have to start looking at is what part of humanity's creation or that what they're creating now is not in our best interest i'm certainly not going to eat chicken that's grown in the laboratory. Sorry, not going to do it. I'm not going to create manufactured food from just not going to happen for me. What is that going to do to our systems? What is it going to do to our systems that they're not going to tell us? just like what these lights doing to us, that they're not telling us. They know it. Well, it's not a big deal. I just read an article where in the United States, the tobacco company said it's a violation of the First Amendment or something, uh, that for the government to put stickers that smoking is against your health. <laughs> they know it, <laughs> but to say it, to say it, that's, that's a violation of their rights because 
they have the right to kill you. They have the right to give you a, sell you a product that's going to make you sick. And blame you. You're the one who smoked it. We just made it. We're not responsible. This is the world. Let's take responsibility. Let's be like the frost on the grass. Know that we're here and when and then we're not here. And we're here and we're not here. But we have a purpose. All of us have a purpose. So as far as the lighting goes, since it's about uh, crystalline brilliance, there are light bulbs out there. This, this took me on a journey of all kinds of things where they are called full spectrum, full spectrum light bulbs that give you as much of a similarity as you can get from the sun. And I'm going to do this, but I'm, I'm going to start buying some and putting them in my house where I sit the most and see if there's a difference. I can't say there will be or there won't be, but I look at it and I realize that a lot of the things that I feel physically that are not in alignment, I could actually see that I don't get enough sun. And I, you know, I'm not going to go out and sunbathe. That's not who I am. But how do I bring that into my house? How do I start shifting my inner, my environment, especially in the winter where it's dark and we don't have as much light? How am I going to find things that are going to enhance the energy field of my house and bring more light into it? Whether it's light that I can see, it doesn't matter. The light energy, whatever that energy is. So the key for this, today's message is to find the light and find ways to get more light in your life. Because the world needs your crystalline brilliance, both physically Emotionally, or it's three ways, physically, emotionally, and thought-wise. We can balance, rebalance the world. We can shift this around. We are the ones who chose to be here in this moment. And we have future generations who are waiting to be here, to do their work as well and live their lives in peace and harmony. They're not coming here to go to war. They're not coming here to destroy the planet. We are all part of this living system. And remember that our crystalline brilliance is needed now more than ever for a natural evolution of humanity. Our future generations are speaking to us very clearly. Listen and shift. I love you. I thank you. I respect you. I am you. I hope my talk planted some seeds. Um, you don't have to uh, necessarily believe or do anything other than be who you are. And remember that each one of us have a responsibility, not just to ourselves, but to humanity, to the animals to the trees. And when we don't abide by that, <clears throat> what happens is everything gets destructive. 
may each of you, as we move into this, this holiday, holiday season and the shorter days of light, find ways to light yourself. I love you. We'll see you next Friday. Hope something I said was uh, important. I feel it was. Even if we just shift our consciousness one degree towards the light, we've advanced. Bless you all. Love you all. Have a great week.